So now we're going to have a look at uh, the markings on the uh, bison. Um, I'll, I won't be using uh, decals, um, I actually use stencils. Um, I find that the stencils give a, a, a more realistic look on the model. Um, for this particular build, um, we'll be looking using the Voyager marking set. Um, but for my other uh, vehicles um, and models, I use a variety of stencils. Um, just to, like I said, just get that realistic look. It's quite a straightforward process. Um, it's just a matter of getting some Tamiya tape um, and putting some on, on the top edge of your uh, stencil. Lining it up to where you actually want it to be. And then when you're happy with that, put the other air, uh, parts of the masking tape down all four sides. So not only does it hold it in place, um, but it actually gives that particular whole area um, coverage um, in case you get any of the uh, paint um, on the model itself so it, it, it acts as um, protection as well as fixing the stencil in place once you've done that add a layer of hairspray uh, don't do it before uh, you add the stencil um, because otherwise the masking tape etc could bring uh, take off the paint underneath so once it's all in place add on your hairspray let that dry and then again do a very faint coat um, of white uh, to create the the, the um, marking. Once uh, the hour uh, has passed, then you can start doing the um, the chipping. Now, I don't actually try and chip the marking uh, when I do uh, um, the markings. What I try to do is what I call crazing, uh, like like crazy paving or crazing patterns that you would see on China. Uh, where you the, the the paint doesn't physically actually come off of the model, you're just sort of moving it a little bit, sort of creating very very fine lines. Um, it takes a bit of practice, um, and it's certainly never one hundred percent perfect, um, but uh, the effect is 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 uh, quite a good one. So I'll get on and do that, and then I'll show you some stills of uh, how well it went. So with all the uh, acrylic work done, um, it's time to turn our attention to the pigments and the oil work. Um, the model's been given a couple of coats of matte varnish. And as you can see, I've already uh, done the majority of the pigment work. Um, if you want to know in more detail um, how I do pigments on the lower hull, have a look at my uh, uh, mini Stug by Dragon. And there's some more detailed information on, on how to do the pigments there uh, but basically it's uh, three colors um, starting with with your dark uh, medium color and then the light now in this particular model um, I've added on some snow just using some white uh, pigments but as you can see it is quite stark and um, it stands out quite a lot um, which isn't good so basically just get yourself a little brush and we'll just start blending that in and then that looks more realistic also spreads it around a little bit in the area and what I'm going to do on this model is how we can go about actually improving the overall look of the pigment work uh, by using oils so leave this with me for a moment and then I'll come back to you and we'll start work on the oils now I've made myself up uh, the usual palette um, of oils uh, for this build. Um, we've got uh, the general whites, um, some warm sepia, uh, which is ideal for, for oily stuff. Obviously grey because it's a Panzer Grau tank. Uh, burnt sienna uh, for your rust and uh, woodwork etc. Raw umber which is basically dirt um, and burnt umber uh, which is uh, darker shadows and, and colours. And then we've got some mud, earth, light mud, and um, cream buff, which is a lovely uh, tone for, for earthwork as well. So what we're going to be doing is, is, is a little bit of fun. Um, it's just very much a matter of, of doing splatter marks. Um, we'll also do some, some washes, um, etc. Just to create um, uh, more interest 
uh, on the um, pigment work um, and some more realism um, with sort of leakage f from oil and, and that sort of thing. So let's get stuck straight in. Um, we've moistened, uh, I have some uh, thinners here, um, I've moistened the brush um, and we're going to go straight into the warm sepia and create a little wash there. And then what we need to do is just to try and get some of these highlights to, to pop a little bit. A little bit more thinner. There we are. That's better. So that's coming out nicely now. Feel free to let some of it run down as well. And just sort of concentrate around the, the, the mechanisms um, here on the rear wheel. And we've got the plates here as well. There we go, you can see that detail's come out quite nicely now. Onto the spring, try and get rid of some of those pigments there. And that's looking better already. Okay, so I'll carry on, just finish that off and then we'll come back to do some more. So the warm sepia has been applied all the way around and as you can see all the pigments are starting to blend in now. And a lot better tones. Um, here, um, basically on on top of the pans, uh, there's the uh, cover for the transmission area where you put all your in, uh, oil and and that sort of thing. So there may well be a spillage, and that's come down onto the front here. This is just the basis, and obviously I'll I'll improve on that as the model goes on. And again, around the other side, you can see where the detail is starting to pop now and you can see it in more detail and again underneath on the rear um, again probably another spillage for, for, from up top and that's come down as well along the sides so just a little uh, extra detailing like that always helps um, now we're going to have a little bit of fun uh, where we're going to be doing the uh, splatter marks uh, very simple process um, using your, your craft knife um, Basically, you, you, you'll have two types of splatter marks, um, all depend on the amount of thinner you use. So if you have a, a, um, a, just a moist brush um, and you load that up, and then it's just a matter of flicking. Now, because as you can see, this is very thick, the splatter marks that you're going to get are going to be rather exact, like pinpoints, um, which is great. So you can do a little bit of that. And then what you need to do is just moisten your brush a little bit more with the thinner. And now all of a sudden you've got more of a watery mixture on your knife. And then when you do that again, um, you get a lot more intensity with the splatter marks. And a lot more variation. Let's see if we can see that up close. So you can see some of it there. Now for some reason, you're not happy with, with the particular splatter mark. Um, if, we, if we just take this one here, just above the, there we go. That could be a little bit too big and out of scale. So with a moist, clean brush, just add a little bit of thin on. And there you go, it's disappeared and it's expanded. So variety of colors um, I always use the warm sepia below the hull um, because of its oily, te oily texture but um, going back to the uh, oil palette um, we also have all the earths and light muds here so that will be involved um, and then ultimately around the front and the back I'll add on some whites as well so leave that with me and I'll come back and see show you the final results Okay, so that's all of the um, oil work uh, done on the uh, lower hull now. Um, 
first major difference that you can probably see is how well the um, white pigments have now blended in and aren't so stark and looking a lot more realistic and if I just pull away there if you have a look at the um, white paper underneath that gives you an idea of the sort of splatter marks that are actually on the vehicle itself and um, the front is coming along very nicely indeed and then we have the other side and what you mustn't forget is the underneath okay so the rear has been done also the underside of the fenders has been done as well as well as the back mud guards so that will be left alone now um, and what we'll do now is to make a start on the actual oil work itself um, primary goal initially on a winter camouflage vehicle is to uh, lighten up as much as possible using the various whites and that's what I'll show how I do that now so let's start doing some oil work on the um, shield um, what we need to do is just to improve the whiteness the white areas um, give a little bit of depth some layers and um, if you remember rightly on the palette we have three different yellows there now the actual um, what would you say sort of creamier of, of the yellows the middle one which is the Juan that's what I like to um, add on into the any sort of join areas so if we just put a little bit there get the blending brush and we we'll just blend that in and that gives that nice little hue to it a bit more so apply and blend and there we go if we just get the light on there there you get that slight little discoloration it's very nice indeed so again we'll do that up on the hinge of the little panel here so apply and blend apply and then just blend it around there we go very nice indeed and then the hinge So that's that. Let's just do a little bit down here by the rivets. Just on the corner of that. And again, just on the underside of that hinge. There we are. Okay, so that's good. So let's clean off the brush and we'll choose another white. Now, if you can imagine. Um, with the shield on top of the um, Panzer hull this particular area along here is where all the snow is going to gather bearing in mind this has been through two Russian winters so we're going to get a lot of stain work etc um, already done with the acrylics a nice base there so let's enhance that colour base and we'll do some whites so again apply it and then blend apply you see how those rivets just pop then so that's nice so I'm going to leave that so I'll just move along a little bit and we'll do some more so that's nice as well ok so that gives you an idea there of how I'd go around on the edges and then one other area that you need to look at is possibly doing a few little streaks um, we'll get a different brush for that one so uh, more of the flat headed one and let's say we have a streak just coming off here and 
and then we'll just blend that down. coming all the way down now to the hub at the bottom where it would settle go around the hub and then possibly come down to the bottom as well so always you know think in your own mind where the sort of melted ice and snow would stain and, and, and make its mark um, so this is going to be quite a long process it'll take me an hour or two to do the whole vehicle um, so I'll uh, do that and, and show you what the final results are Okay, so the work with the uh, white oars has been done. So let's have a look and see what we have. This being the shield. There's a little bit of um, white speckling gone on. Uh, don't overdo it at this particular stage. Uh, it's more intense along the bottom. Um, again, you can see the yellowishness on the hinges and on the joins. And we've got some rain marks coming down there at the front and that was the the first side that we dealt with so that was the shield as far as the barrel goes um, it's really just a matter of trying to get this um, creation of water marks coming down the side um, which was easily done with with streaks there we go and then obviously at the front as well and slightly more enhanced on that side just to give a bit of contrast. Um, with the bow there, there was no splatter marks. Um, however on the front shield again along with the rain marks coming down from the top uh, we have some splatter marks along the bottom there as well. Remember this is all just base coat um, for when we do the intensifying and making it um, darker here at the front again just bases laid down for further dirt work later on very pleased with the way that's gone work around the holders as you can see there's there's nothing in this central area because obviously that will all be dark and then we've intensified the um, holders for the wicker baskets. And again some streak work down on the rear mud guards as well. So very pleased with that. Um, as far as the wheels go, the wheels are very much a, a layering process. Um, you need to do several layers and build up the detail. So this is very much the start. Um, Let's see if we can get that in, so just some focus, there we go. So we've got some radial streaks started there, again some splatter marks as well, and some discoloration, and always remember to do the back as well, so splatter marks there. But again, a long way to go with the wheels, all about creating those layers. Now if you want to uh, crack on and carry on with the oil work, you can do, just get the hair dryer on it and, and, and dry, out, dry it out. Um, but in my world it's uh, off to work and I'll come back to the bench tomorrow and do some more. So with the first layer of oils applied, uh, being the white, um, we now need to start to darken things up a little bit. And now what we're going to do is add, I don't know, you can either call it a, a dust or a um, light mud uh, layer um, as we um, pursue our goal of getting to, to, to the dark colours at the end. Um, so we're going to be using buff itself now obviously because you've already got a layer of oil on the model what we don't want to be doing is overloading uh, the brush um, with thinner because the last thing you want to do is to start taking off all of that hard work that you've done and it's really just a matter of um, applying a very thin coat not quite a, a filter, in between a filter and a wash um, and then what we'll do is to start blending it in so if we just start at the top there 
that's far too watery, so I'll take that off. Let's get using the the using oils is all about getting the consistency correct. And as you can see, I'm working on an area that doesn't already have oils on it, so I'm in no danger of taking anything off at all. Just try and get this a little bit thicker. That's better. Okay, so once applied, um, and it's just a matter of blending it all in. Uh, my good friend uh, John Race was kind enough to send me some royal fine sable brushes, which are ideal for the blending process. So, as you can see, we just add this on now. Looking at it, it doesn't seem to be a great deal happening. Um, I can actually see things darkening up that little bit and if I just show you the inside that's the sort of effect um, that you'll get um, if I show you the here we go this is probably a better example there we go um, that side I just did a little bit and then for contrast I did quite quite a lot on that side so you can see the difference that this particular layer of oil work is actually going to create on, on the model itself. Um, so you can blend it in with the brush like so um, but with the the top here what would be nice is to actually draw down some streaks so just using the brush like so and then blending in the bottom bit there. There we go. And that's all it is, it's just a matter of going around, putting little bits of extra layers of dirt, blending it all in, and then once that's dry, you can either dry it with the hair dryer, or like myself, go and do a day's work and then come back to the bench the following day, and then that will be nice and dry um, to allow you to put the next level of colour using the oils. Every time you do a, a layer of oils what you must always remember to do is to add on um, the splatter marks as well. Um, so we've got some white splatter marks now I'm going to be adding on uh, the buff ones. Um, the next layer slightly darker we'll have some more. Um, so ultimately you, you, you'll, you'll get around about three to four um, layers of splatter marks which um, adds a nice contrast to the build I don't want to go too high up uh, with the with the um, with the splatter marks which are more defined however if I make it more like a uh, filter um, I'm, and come back a little bit as you can see and um, the splatter marks are a lot more watery um, and pretty well much disappear but once dry they'll add that effect on there as well. So now it's time to add another uh, layer of colour and uh, now we're actually going to be doing some dirt. Um, this time I'm going to be using uh, raw umber. Um, and it's very important here uh, to make sure you don't load your brush too much with thinner because the last thing you want to be doing is, is taking off all of the uh, hard work that you've been doing with the other layers. Um, what we do want to do though is to be um, somewhat more precise uh, than what we have been before uh, with 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 the other layers okay so with this is sort of a little bit like shading um, so sort of aim aim for the corners um, around where the shadows would be created the most there we go and again similar sort of process uh, whereby you just apply and blend you can certainly do some streaks uh, but again be very careful um, because you will be in danger of pulling off of the other oil work that you've already done and really just let your mind wander um, go where you, you'd like to get the best effect and once you have that effect don't don't carry on playing with it 
just leave it be um, and just again have a bit of fun build up the colors build up some depth to the model uh, my one of my particular favorites to create little, little watermarks so we just go jagged lines and then blend upwards and there you go you get that nice effect like so we'll have some others coming down this way this time and there we go just just, just to add a bit more depth and, and flavor to, to, to the model um, here's some of the well, I've already finished okay and then this panel it's is on the other side is all complete as well so with all of that done uh, what that leaves then is the very final uh, layer uh, which is the burnt umber uh, which is which is the dark brown um, some of you may want to use Valkyrie brown uh, it's entirely up to you but I, I prefer the burnt umber because it's not quite as dark um, and here we're really looking at sort of uh, doing pin washes. Now I know people like to just do a pin wash on every single rivet and every single hinge, uh, bracket, etc, etc. But if you do actually look at a tank, um, not everything ha has a dirt mark around it. Um, if you actually have a look on this panel here, that there are some that have already been done in white and, and, and the other colours that I've already added. So you don't actually have to go around and do every single one. But here you're going to be a lot more precise. Um, try and paint in. It's very difficult to do this at camera length. And just try and highlight the odd one here and there. Because as you can see it is it is quite an overpowering colour. There we go, so that's all blended in nicely. And do another one there. Now because this is quite quite a precision um part of the uh, final stages, um I think I'm gonna have to do this off of camera because I'm gonna be messing all of that good work up. So once I've done that, um I'll show you the the, the, the final reveal. Uh, with all the other parts that I've done as well. Okay then, let's spend some time and have a look at the wheels. Uh, done very much in the same style as the main body itself. Um, all about building up layers. Um, so here, as you can see, with one of the sprockets, um, it was, uh, again had the winter whitewash, then a little bit of dust effect. Then we put some raw umber on there, bit of a bit of a pin wash and then we had some more exacting uh, oil work with the uh, warm sepia um, to give the impression of, of, of some uh, oil on there as well um, and of course on the back as and when you use a different colour just, just do some splatter marks there as well so that was the case with all of the wheels. Um, I'm not a great fan of rust um, on my models. However, it is quite nice to, uh, as an added feature to do some little rust spots um, using the uh, burnt sienna. Put it on neat. Uh, no need to um, moisten it at all. Just put it on neat like that. And that just gives the impression of some scratch marks. Um, I've only done it on a couple of wheels because like I said I'm not a fan of, of, of rust marks on my wheels. So what I'd like to show you is um, just a little process that I use to uh, improve the blandness um, of, of the road wheel. Also as you can see a lot of the splatter marks have, have gone on on the black as well. And what we want to do is try and achieve this nice um, mottled effect. Um, let's just try and get that in focus. There we go. And it just looks like a little bit more realistic and that gives us um, a basis to do some, some further oil work. Um, it's a very simple process. Um, it's just a matter of, of, of giving it a, in this particular case being a, a winter scene um, using white. Um, however, if it was possibly in the desert, then you may want to use a, a buff colour. Uh, the similarities uh, aren't, extreme, aren't that um, noticeable. 
um, and then all you got to do is just to give it a wash on the outside um, be a little bit careful on the inside because obviously you spent a lot of time doing all of those um, different um, colors on the rims etc and that's that on there and then all we need to do is to take it straight off again using a sponge very straightforward process going all the way around and as you can see that mottled effect is starting to appear there we are and on the just doing it on the edges and on the back as well it's all very simple um, then it's just a matter of leaving that to dry there we go so once dry, as I've already shown you, you get the mottled effect. And then um, it's a matter of getting some uh, burnt umber. Um, if you notice earlier in one of the videos, I showed you how to take chunks out of tyres to, to give you that worn effect. So it's a matter of using the uh, raw umber just to fill in those gaps and put some dirt and some streak stains on there as well. Um, it's not a mammoth difference, it's just a matter of adding a little bit of extra variety to what, what I see on a lot of uh, models, which is just a bland blank tyre. So, have a go, let's see, see what you think and, and see how that improves your, your, your own model. Okay, let's spend some time having a look at the tracks. Um, if you remember, these were the uh, full tracks. Um, these have been primed um, using black surface primer. Um, and then they were given a, a base coat um, of burnt umber. And now what we're going to do... Um, sorry, uh, there was also uh, given uh, a couple of coats of... Uh, matte varnish um, because we're going to be doing the, some oil and pigment work on them um, now if, this is the underside of the tracks as you can see um, what uh, we're going to be doing is putting some pigments on each side um, the center run um, of the tracks uh, here this is where the uh, wheel uh, go or the tire of the wheels will go um, so no pigments to go on there and that will be coloured um, later on with um, burnt iron acrylic and then uh, the inside of uh, each track tooth uh, will have a little bit of uh, steel but I'll go into more detail on that later. Um, so let's get to, to work with the pigments. Now rather than with other pigment work that we've done uh, whereby we actually uh, drop it from a height and t t tap the pigments on onto the um, track. Uh, this time we want to be a little bit more more precise. We don't want it to be as coarse, um, so we need to just using the brush get as much of the lumps of the pigment out as possible, and then it's a matter of pretty well much just painting on. I suppose you can see that there. Then moving on to the other colours, this is the lighter colours. Um, don't worry about mixing it all up because it will all come out in the wash. And there we go. And really just, just, just create um, different colours all the way along to give you an idea of dirt that it's accumulated. Again, try and get some on the um, track pins as well. Um, and just really just spend a bit of time building it, building up the layers 
and then we'll have a look at how we get that fixed into place. Okay, so we've uh, managed to add on all the uh, pigment now. Um, I'll try and get a close-up shot for you so you can just get an idea of the discoloration there. I don't want to pick it up because obviously there's loose pigments on there. And what we're going to do now is we're actually going to fix it in place this time um, using uh, Tamiya thinners. Um, again, it's a very straightforward process um, using your pipette. Um, we'll draw out some of the thinner. Um, and then it's just a matter of very carefully, I expect you can see that. Let me just put that down and then zoom in so you can see how that's with capillary action just seeped into all the areas there and that's all you need to do. So just carefully go along doing that. Now as it stands at the moment it's not going to look that fantastic. Um, the effect will come once it's dry. Um, and once it is dry, if you want to do it again, or if you want to improve certain areas again, then just carry on and add some more thin layers of pigments. So with the pigment work done on the underside, it's just a matter of turning the tracks over. Um, and this time we'll go back to the old techniques um, of tapping uh, from a height. Again, mixing it up um, with light and with dark. Um, you can't see this, uh, but because uh, obviously the, the track is now completely covered in uh, thinner, uh, this is all soaking in uh, nicely. And what we'll do is just spend a bit of time sprinkling this all the way along. Very simple uh, process, uh, but very effective. Okay, so the tracks are now complete. Um, very pleased with the result. Let's see if we can give you an idea. Um, obviously, I'll do some uh, still shots as well. Um, little finishing touches was some uh, splatter marks with uh, oils. Um, all the pins along the side were given a warm sepia wash as well. Um, on the underside, you can see that the middle has been um, covered in with um, burnt iron acrylics and as you can see uh, the top of the teeth um, have been done in steel uh, to represent the wearing um, down from the wheel rim. Uh, when you do the, this, this particular uh, part of the detail make sure you don't go all the way to the bottom because obviously that's the tyre depth, it's only the, the top bar of the teeth that needs to be coloured. Um, so that's uh, both the tracks done. Um, what we'll do now um, is move on to just to, to look at um, the model before we put it all back together. So I've decided to call the uh, painting stage uh, complete now. Um, it's a matter of putting everything together. Uh, but let's have a run through of some of the things that have been done. Um, that I may not have shown you before. Um, starting at the front, as you can see, all of the pigment work's been done. We've got a little bit of oil leakage down on the crease. Moving up to the top, it's nicely weathered. There will be um, a tow rope going on here as well to, to, to break up that area. And also the um, suitably rusted tracks have been put alongside. Coming round, um, if you can see um, on the far side and on the near side some pigment work has been done where the wheels will be going for the SIG 33. Here we have some more work done where the um, wicker baskets um, are going to be kept. There's a little bit of fuel leakage down the side as well, which has come out particularly well. You have the radio holder on the corner there, um, which I'll put a little bit of an extra wash on to make that stand out. 
and working our way round to the back we have the exhaust there is an exhaust cover that will be going over that to complete it and again and the markings there to coincide with the C markings on the shield uh, the back area I didn't want to do a particular great deal to because I wanted to keep it all dark um, so that was just done with uh, with an earth wash um, and as you can see fuel stains and marks around the filler cap um, the tools there was only the wooden handle on the snips so that was done again with oils the jack just had to, some oils and dirt washes applied and again we come round to the front where the remaining wicker basket container is and then we have the radio itself not a great deal needed to be done here and all the sending and receiving equipment and then we can have a quick look down into the hull itself the seat and the bedroll need to be put up in there but that's basically all of the lower hole complete the shield well we've seen most of the shield um, because that's been the area that I've done most of the tutorial work on so you're familiar with this and um, the inside and um, we have some dust at the front there um, again where the uh, 633 will be positioned and then it's just general washes and dirting out very much in the same processes as the rest of the model let's get some light in on there there we go the shield of the 633 itself that's come out particularly well pleased with that You'll notice the missing hinge on the door, not too concerned because one it'll be covered and two it adds a little bit of character. And then obviously on the reverse, just a matter of dirting up and just looking well worn and used. Then we have the carriage itself, uh, very pleased with how it's gone, various washes were done on the wheels. As you can see. And on the tyres themselves, and then that theme has been carried on around the whole of the carriage itself. The sandbags have been suitably distressed and painted, and again, here we come around the other side. Not a great deal will be seen underneath, uh, so just a few general washes etc have been done so that's the carriage and then finally the barrel itself again very pleased with how this has turned out just general washes and it will work in conjunction with the rest of the model. So, there's a few little uh, bits and pieces to be done, but primarily now uh, what we're going to be doing is concentrating on uh, the rebuild of the whole of the model. Um, this is, for me, m one of the most stressful parts of the build because things don't fit. Um, things fall off, things get broken, um, so it is a matter of um, doing it in stages, taking time. Um, this model's been on my bench now for 10 months, I don't want to ruin it at the final hurdle, so I shall take a few days to put it all together, add all the accessories, and then I shall do the final reveal. <laughs>